thank you all for coming to another one of our Climate Matters shows, a hybrid press conference and TV show coming to you live. COP23 in Bonn, Germany, we're coming from. My name is Stuart Scott. I'm the host of these shows. Here's my email address. I like to give it at the beginning and end of the show so that people can be in touch with me, with my guests. Any questions or comments? My guest today, Dr. Stanislav Shmelev. He's the director of Environment Europe, based in Oxford, England. And he's a visiting lecturer at the University of Edinburgh, Scotland. He can be reached by his Twitter handle, at environment underscore art. The topic of today's show, ecological economics, climate change, and the new green economy. Very important ideas, especially in my mind, ecological economics, an alternative to the current economic system that is getting us into the big mess we're in. I have a copy of, of the book that Stanislav edited, and it was actually composed as a collection of articles and essays by a very esteemed cast of characters, shall we say, some of the most important people in ecological economics. Achim Steiner in the upper left corner did the forward on this edition, and I would say it's very good reading. Actually, say a few words about the book, if you would. Well, ecological economics is an interdisciplinary field that emerged at the end of the 80s out of a realization that um, the current approaches are not really um, getting us to the desired result in terms of sustainability. And this book brings together um, thinkers from many different countries. It's a very international book. Sweden, Canada, Germany, uh, Russia, United States, United Kingdom, and a few other countries. And uh, the topics that we discuss here range from the uh, growth paradigm and the critical analysis of it, uh, to the use of material resources, to climate change and renewable energy, to sustainable cities and regenerative cities. Uh, we look at the assessment of progress towards sustainability, uh, discuss ecological values, which is extremely important for changing our uh, consumption patterns and our behavior. There was, there was one word that you used in there, and I, I told uh, Stanislav before the show that anytime he uses a word which is not in the common vocabulary, I'm going to either stop him and define it, make him define it. Regenerative cities. Currently, our cities consume lots, but they don't treat the environment lightly. They push their wastes out to the fringes, whether it's in the water or in the landfills, in the atmosphere. Um, regenerative cities are cities that are trying to do the opposite, trying to actually generate good things in nature, certainly reduce their footprint. Do I have that about right? Yes, and there are some examples around the world. I would like to quote the example of Singapore, which since its independence has introduced a massive program of greening. They were planting a lot of trees, and this is actually exactly what we need. But apart from that, there were a lot of uh, improvements in terms of energy efficiency, in terms of highly successful public transport systems. And without these wide-ranging measures, we have very little chance to get where we want to be. Okay. What do we got here? Well, in the course of the past 50 years or so, uh, economic growth, we know, has brought with it a lot of side effects. And these side effects included climatic change, the subject of this conference, this is, uh, by the way, a shot from the movie Chasing Ice. That's James Balog going into an ice crevasse to actually get close-ups of what we're doing on the Greenland ice sheet. And what's this? Well, we are causing tremendous impacts in terms of deterioration of our rivers and lakes and soils through industrial activity. This is a picture by another environmental photographer, Edward Burtinsky. And uh, it shows us the nickel tailing river in Canada, apparently. Nickel, nickel tailings. Metal, the metal. When I saw this slide, I dismissed it as lava, a lava flow. <laughs> I thought you were going from ice to fire, but this it's is... It's real and it's human-made, unfortunately. 
Uh, this image illustrates the third issue, and that's not an exhaustive list, uh, that we are facing, namely the huge increase in plastic waste in the oceans. According to the United Nations, we have about 260 million tons presently. So uh, photographer Paris won the World Press Photo Award this year with this image of, of a turtle off the coast of Tenerife in Spain, uh, completely um, lost in this enormous uh, fishing net. I'd like to add a comment here. You know, a, a lot of society is somewhat callous. Oh, that's the problem of the turtles. Oh, it was so bad. So, so. The plastics that we put in the ocean <clears throat> degrade. They break down with ultraviolet light, with age. They become micro particles of plastic, which are then assimilated up the food chain, and we eat them they are entering our food chain. It all comes back to us. We live in a closed system. I used to say, there is no a way to throw things. You cannot throw things away in a closed system. This is so important. That's why it's so crucial to speak about solutions. You know, I would like to challenge the audience most often and uh, propose some uh, measures such as standardization of the types of plastics. We're currently dealing with 88,000 types Maybe uh, focusing on PET in the first instance, which is largely recyclable, could be a solution. Ideally, it's probably totally biodegradable materials based on uh, plants. Right, so we have like maybe five or seven classifications for the purposes of recycling. The numbers on, in the US in a little triangle, numbers one through seven. There are thousands upon thousands of different class plastics, and many of them are endocrine disruptors. They mimic estrogen, which means we are feminizing our baby boys and young women are coming of age earlier because they're consuming more estrogen in, the, in their diet. Let's move along though. What, what do we got here? So we are now approaching a new era, the era of sustainable development goals. Um, every single government on this planet is supposed to be following this broad uh, guideline, we have 17 different goals, including those... I like to, to say 17 minus 1, but I'll, <laughs> I'll raise that issue in a moment. Yes, here's the challenge. So we're dealing with good health and well-being, quality education, uh, reduced inequalities, life below water, climate action, of course, partnerships, of responsible production and consumption. But you wanted to raise a point about... Yeah, when I looked these over and studied them, I found that number eight it didn't belong with the others. It was something that bothered me. And I took a look at the definition of decent work and economic growth. Now, my personal belief is our problem is that in aggregate, the human economy has already grown too large. Now, when I bring this point up with, say, Jeffrey Sachs, who is one of the authors of these Sustainable Development Goals, one of its chief defenders, he says, well, we have to allow for developing nations to grow. Yeah, okay, fine, I understand. You have to bring them out of poverty. But that development goal, if you look at it, it says a, a target of a minimum 7% per annum GDP growth. GDP, gross domestic product, which is a flawed measure in itself. And it says nothing about developed nations. Well, if underdeveloped nations can grow 7% minimum, then why can't the United States or the EU, or why can't we grow at least that? The problem is our economies are too big in aggregate. We're consuming too much of the resources of the planet. We are appropriating nature for our own uses and driving out many, many, many species as we do so. So I think that one really needs a rethink. Well, one of our contributors, Herman Daly, has been very vocal ah. about the distinction between economic growth per se and sustainable development. He was emphasizing the fact that sustainability is more about qualitative improvement in multiple dimensions, mm -hmm. and economic growth is just an expansion. So um, it is an issue, mm -hmm. and it seems to be more advantageous to discuss growth as a goal in political circles. But at the same time, we need to understand that at the very least, whichever increases are happening in the figure called GDP are going hand in hand with the improvements and not deterioration 
in all other dimensions. And that includes CO2 emissions, that includes quality of life, that includes biodiversity, that includes um, use of natural resources. I want to spend a word more on Herman Daly. I try to bring his name and his image into as many of my shows as I can, because as far as I'm concerned, his work is not only seminal, it's required that we study, that we understand ecological economics if, if humanity is to survive. It's, it's down to that. Um, he founded, pretty much he's regarded as the father of ecological economics. Um, I would bring him here to the COP, except he's elderly now and, and of, of frail health. I am promoting a Nobel Peace Prize, I'll mention it at the end again, where he's one of the three nominees because I believe his work is so seminal in future peace. In a world of dwindling resources, we will experience unthinkable warfare over the remaining resources. Ecological economics is something that would help put us on a road towards true sustainability, because I believe the current sustainable development that's being bandied around conveniently by nations and, and political leaders is green growth, which is an oxymoron at this point, sustainable growth. Mainstream ec economists have tried to pass off the fact that growth is sustainable. There, is no, there are no planetary limits, but... Well, unfortunately, this year we are observing 403 ppm concentrations of CO2, which is higher than last year. Yeah. And if you look at the global total emissions, uh, dear members of the audience, could you tell me what is the latest year for which CO2 emissions are available in international statistics. It's 2017 now. Is it 2016? Is it 2015? Tell me. More Absolutely. or less 2013. 13. So we're 14 lagging. absolute Four maximum. years on. There is a delay of two to three years. How on earth can we manage the most important problem here that is facing? Again, we're running short on time, so. What yes, we well, in order to make our contribution, we set up an executive education program at Oxford, uh, which is taking shape of executive summer and winter schools in ecological economics. We're terribly pleased to announce that this program has reached out to people from 52 different countries. And the participants that come usually are representing UNDP, UNEP, uh, IUCN, WWF, OECD, leading universities, sometimes even companies. You know, we, we've seen young That's, rebels from Shell. That is progress. That is pro that nations and, and intergovernmental organizations are beginning to pay attention to ecological economics. He's an, also an artist, and I wanted to present some of his art today. And My deep conviction is that we need to change the language to reach the hearts and minds of wider public on environmental issues. So in these few slides, you will see five different works that I've made which form a magical realism series. It's focused on ecosystems and biodiversity. And in fact, ecosystems are those stabilizing elements for maintaining the stability of our climate. And it's extremely important to regenerate and preserve and replant and nourish what we have, both on land and in the oceans. So what is the juxtaposition? What is it you're trying to show here? Well, in this particular piece, if you can see on the left-hand side, there is a virgin forest. The right-hand side, the hills on the right-hand side, have been completely deforested by people and converted into agriculture. The palm trees are only standing because they were of direct economic value. Uh, they are called wax palms, and they were used to produce candles. In a way, this image acts as a little warning signal uh, that this indeed could happen to all of us if we only focus on the direct economic value of nature. Mm, mm. If we focus on money alone, that's what we get. Money. King Midas. If all you want is money, that's all you'll get. So I want to thank you all again for coming to another Climate Matters show. I'm your host, Stuart Scott. We don't have time, I'm sorry to say, for questions from the audience. Here's my email address if you'd like to send questions. Thank you very much for coming. Ooh, ooh, ooh.